Hey guys, it's Don Mars Ortiz here, and today I'm going to shoot a quick video to show you how to move a list from Aweber to GetResponse. I've had that question a lot lately because I did recently switch to GetResponse, and I have been in the process of moving all of my email lists over. So I guess a lot of people are concerned that they're going to have a hard time, and it's actually really quite simple. If you have a lot of lists, it can be a bit time consuming, but it's not a difficult process. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it with one list. And I'm gonna use this Twitter Fusion list. Whatever list you wanna move, just select it up here in your Aweber account, all right? And under subscribers, you're gonna to have to click on manage subscribers. I'm already there. So you can see that this list has 268 subscribers, so it's not huge. But to move it over, all you need to do is scroll to the bottom of the list and you'll see export CSV. I'm gonna right click on it save the link as and I'm gonna save it where I've got all my other email subscribers right in this list here and I'm gonna name it the same thing it was called Twitter fusion all right and then I'm just gonna click save and that's gonna download to that folder okay so the next thing that we need to do is go back over to the get response account that you want to add it into and you need to create the list in get response like a new campaign basically so on this drop down I'm going to go down to here and say create campaign and I'm going to call this one the same thing I'm just going to call it Twitter fusion so I don't get myself confused right you just want to keep everything straight especially if you have a lot of lists it can get confusing so I'm just going to click on create new campaign now this part is really important. Once you've created the campaign, you want to go into this little icon right here, and this is gonna be your campaign settings. Now what you wanna do is go down to permission. And here what I want to do is just take off my email subscriptions and web subscriptions because I don't want to reconfirm opt-in, all right? If you want to have confirmed opt-in, then that's completely up to you, but for this one, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave that. It automatically saves. You can see there's no save button. It automatically saved. In profile up here, you can put your campaign title, and keep in mind, this is the title that if someone tries to unsubscribe, this is what they're going to see. And I'm just going to put Twitter training for this particular list and click save. If you have a logo or an image for the product or the campaign that, that you're actually using here then by all means go ahead and put it in but for the purposes of this training I'm just gonna leave that blank okay so now that I've done that now that I have a list where I want to import this my my Aweber list into all you need to do is go to contacts and say import contacts so when you come over here it's gonna look a little bit different because you actually have to accept their terms and certify that your list is permission based if you're importing from Aweber or from any other email, you know, a major email autoresponder, it's going to be permission based because you built that list yourself and you, you got those opt-in subscribers. What they're trying to prevent is you going to a list vendor and just buying a list of leads and then uploading them uh, because that's not, it doesn't meet their policy. So if you're importing from another email subscriber or another email autoresponder service, you, you should be fine. So all you need to do is click on upload file. And then what we do is click on choose file and in here we're going to find the Twitter fusion.csv and click open. Now this doesn't work every time so we're going to see if this is going to work. So I clicked import contacts and it was totally fine. I'm going to go back in a minute and show you what to do if it doesn't because sometimes it gives you this um, error message that the UTF-8 encoding, whatever that means, the UTF-8 encoding is incorrect and so you need to change that and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Now all you need to do here is just double check to make sure that the fields that they're importing are correct. So this is yes, email addresses, names, and I'm not importing any of the times that they subscribed or anything like that, but I do click on show custom fields and down here down here I do want to import their country and this is my own personal preference I just like to have this information so that if I ever need to go into my list and see who is somebody that's talking to me I kinda know where they're from and that sort of thing so here I just wanna put that this is their state and this is gonna be their city and here is their postal code 
postal code zip code but in in get response it is postal code so that's what you need to put there so that's all that you need to do there because none, none of this other stuff needs to be imported and then just click on next step and you select the campaign you want it to go into again you're gonna it's gonna ask you if you want confirmed opt-in I do not want to reconfirm the opt-in I just want to move the list over and so I'm gonna click on finish import And so that's all that you have to do. It says that your the compliance department is going to verify your list and it's going to take up to two business days, but they typically get back very, very quickly. My other lists have all, all been approved within a day and you can start emailing them right away. So you don't have to wait. Now, if you go, I've, I've read online that if you go and you import a whole lot of lists and, a, and big big lists that it could take a little bit longer and that the compliance department may have some questions about that so if you do have a huge list you might want to contact them first but I just want to show you that the process itself is very very simple okay now if we go back and for example that you got that UTF-8 message all that you need to do is open a word um, not a word processor for me what I'm gonna be using is open office because I don't have Microsoft Office. But OpenOffice is a free open source thing. You can download it if you if you don't have Microsoft Word or a spreadsheet program. And all you're gonna do is click on File, Open. And you're gonna go find the CSV file that you downloaded and click on that and click on Open. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because I got really frustrated at first. It was really bothersome to me. So when you first open this up, the settings can be a little bit different and comma isn't usually ticked off. But the way that they have these, they're called delimiters, the way that they separate the information is by comma. So you need to check that off and you can see that it separates things out nicely the way that they need to be separated. So then you just click OK and it, it's opening up that spreadsheet. Now what you need to do is click on File and Save As and you can see that it's going to save as text CSV what you also need to click off here is edit filter settings and then click on save and then what you're going to say is replace and it's going to ask you the if the document formatting or content cannot be saved into this the text CSV format and what you're going to say is keep current format now it's going to come up with this character set it's going to automatically have Unicode UTF-8. That is the one that you need. So you need to make sure that that is as it is and everything else should look exactly the same as it does now and then click OK. So now that file is in the correct encoding to be uploaded. This one already happened to be when it was downloaded but for some reason it's not always that way. So this is going to make it really easy if you you can download OpenOffice. It takes a couple of minutes to download and it's completely free. So if you don't have Microsoft Office, don't, don't worry about that. You're going to be just fine. So now that the list has been imported, I just have to wait for the compliance department to let me know. They're going to send me an email in a couple of hours to let me know that that email list has been imported and approved and I'm absolutely ready to go ahead and email them. So I hope that you can see how quick and easy that was. I think it only took us a couple of minutes to go through that and I was breaking it down. So um, I am highly, highly recommending GetResponse. I've been in touch with their support just about constantly since moving over because I've had tons and tons of questions and they have been absolutely wonderful. And slowly but surely I'm getting all my lists moved over. Um, another thing that you can do if you don't want to just move your list or if you've got some old lists is ask them to opt into your new list because of course as time goes by some of your list gets a little bit older and less responsive so while asking people to opt in again is going to it could harm the number of people who move over of course it's going to right because not everybody's going to open the email you will end up with a much smaller much more responsive list and that is at times a, a good thing. So I hope that you found this informative. I'm gonna put a link to get response down below because now that you know how easy it is to move everything over, I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to give it a shot. So the link will be right below the video. If you have any questions, please get in touch. You can email me, don at donmars.com or you can find me on Facebook, Don Mars Ortiz. And I will look forward to hearing from you. I'm always here for any questions or comments you have. So thanks for being here and have a great day.